Um, how are you today? I'm fine. How are you today, John? Fine. Good. So, um, when did you obtain the desire to become an artist? Oh my, this goes way back to when I was a kid. I remember my mom enrolled me in uh, uh, classes at the Albright. It wasn't the Albright Knox then. I think it was just the Albright School. And uh, I've always loved art. And even though I had many jobs uh, over the course of my life, I've always kept my artwork up. So I guess I was born an artist. That's interesting. How long have you been an artist? Well, as I say, from a young age. But uh, seriously, I started showing my work uh, in the 80s. Um, so uh, that's when I started getting more and more exposure. Though I did take some to the Erie County Fair at one point and won a prize, but you know, those little things help you keep going. You know. What does your work express? Um, my work is, because I worked a lot of years um, in uh, human services, um, I really focus on the human being. And uh, I think uh, one of the things that I feel is important is helping all of us get in touch with our vulnerability uh, because when we're vulnerable we're open for the new um, uh, open to see something in a little different way if we're closed um, that's not going to happen to us it's like being a student you know if you're if you come in thinking you know everything you're never going to learn anything so um, so that in, in its essence, when you become a student, you become vulnerable. You become open to learn new ideas. And that's, that's kind of what my wife work is about, but it's a, a kind of an emotional uh, vulnerability of the human being um, to one another. That's awesome. What, um, is there a particular type of message that you're trying to send out in your work? <sighs> um, no, I don't, I don't know that it's a message so much as a... Um, uh, I, I, I try to create artwork that will help people to see things a little differently. Um, I prefer that people kind of uh, uh, be confronted with it, absorb it, and then um, resolve it within themselves, or not resolve it within themselves. But uh, um, as I say, because it's vulnerability, I guess what I hope is be people um, get in touch with their own vulnerability and then become open to whatever um, uh, ideas and thoughts and uh, uh, emotions will come to them in that moment. What's your most successful piece? Oh, gosh, how do you define success? Um, my most successful piece is probably the last piece I'm working on at the very moment, you know? Um, uh, because that is the edge of where I am growing as an artist and um, uh, and it's about the process um, rather than the piece you know it's about what it's doing uh, the act of creation uh, of the piece and learning so that's the most successful piece the one I'm working on right now <laughs> what, is, um, what is your personal favorite Okay, so you're going to go with a, a different route, a personal favorite. Uh, uh, usually, um, ah, gosh, um, the one I've just finished is usually my personal favorite, obviously. Um, uh, they're all like children, you know, it's kind of like I'm, uh, I have three children, you know, tell me, what's your favorite kid? Well, you know, you love them all. They're all different, but you love them all, so... Um, but the personal favorite probably is the one I've just worked on because I've had this uh, sense of completion. What is your most recent piece? Like, do you have a title for it? What is it? Mm, what, what did I just finish? Um, I just finished one called uh, Tamberly Out of Darkness. I've been working on a series of paintings of persons who are or have been chronically homeless in the city of Buffalo and I'm painting them on tar paper that you would use to cover a roof or a side of a house, used to use cover a side of a house. And I'm using oil and encaustics. Encaustics are a wax-based medium. Um, and so I've been painting these to put a face, put human faces on the homeless, so they're not just a category, so that they're really human beings. These are people that live among us. 
and uh, and so uh, that's my most recent piece. Um, so I guess that answers it. You use very natural materials. Uh, yeah, I uh, uh, I had some tar paper in my garage and uh, wondered, gee, what can I do with this? And uh, I used it for a series before this called The Child Inside, and I, I had torn the tar paper into these uh, life-size uh, silhouettes of adults. And then on the other side, I painted the adult in kind of these um, uh, monochromatic black and whites in kind of a light ghostly way, but then had this child in color bursting out of it. And I thought, hey, gee, I'd like to paint on the tar paper. So, like, it happens with artists. Your last piece starts to inform your next pieces. And so that's when I started uh, painting uh, on uh, tar paper. Do you have any plans for the future? Well, yes. Uh, my plans for the future were just upended. Um, all these portraits of the homeless were going to be in a show on August 2nd at Art Space on Main Street. And I found out Friday morning, after I had sent out all the information, that there's construction there, um, and I can't have it. In fact, my homeless show is now homeless. So uh, uh, my plans for the future are to continue to paint these portraits um, and hopefully have the show in November, uh, which is Homeless Awareness Month, and hopefully at Art Space. But if the construction is not completed or the space is not adequate, I'll have to have it someplace else. I'm sorry to hear that. All right, there's two of your pieces I like to talk about that I just saw online. Okay. His face is up close. He's dark skinned. He has glasses on. And it looks like there's an image inside of him, like glass. He's wearing headphones and on his forehead. You go oh, yes. hearing, not hearing, yes, singing. Yes, yes, yes. That's, uh, uh, that's an image that is part of a. Uh, uh, an installation called an interactive uh, visual commentary on IS-53. IS-53 is Isaiah 53 in the Old Testament. And that represents the first verse in that, um, uh, which I think is something like, Who has heard our report? To whom has the Spirit of the Lord been revealed? And um, Isaiah also says someplace else in his book, um, they have eyes but they do not hear. And, uh, or eyes that they do not see and ears that they do not hear. Uh, talking about how we kind of walk around in our world today and we just do not perceive reality. And so what I did with that piece is I, uh, I had two small video monitors and I had uh, 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 created this video that was kind of a, a combination of advertising images, images from our culture, and a walk through Letchworth Park. Uh, reflecting our journey in life and how the distractions of our uh, world interrupt and uh, sometimes cloud our, our journey in life. And so that was kind of my interpretation of that verse. Uh, the face is my son and he has the earphones on because he's um, distracted by his um, iPod or whatever and of course the eyes are sunglasses and uh, that image just continues to loop in that uh, uh, in his eyes so there's video and um, painting in that piece and there's one more um, there's this person they had like this sheet over them they were walking and it showed all these words behind them like gluttony and right uh, right 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 um, uh, that also is from the Isaiah uh, series and let me see if I can remember the verse it's it's something about him carrying all of our um, pains and anguishes and so all of those words uh, represent the pain and anguish um, and behind those bars the words are written on these bars behind those bars is this an idyllic um, uh, uh, landscape which represents essentially Eden you know that we are barred from the ideal by our pain and our and our. Uh, uh, I have to interrupt you because it's a fire drill. So stop recording. We have. To so another one was there was this person walking with a sheet over them, and there mm -hmm. were these words on these bars like gluttony and anger. Mm -hmm. Can you mm -hmm. explain that to me? Uh, yeah, that's also part of the interactive uh, visual commentary of Isaiah. I think it's uh, 
let's see, that would be 1, 2, 3, Isaiah 53, 4, 